So, if the Pythagorean theorem can be used on right triangles only, what do we know about right triangles? They are triangles that have a 90 degree angle. Usually they're marked with this. Now, if you think about the two sides of the triangle that come together to make that right angle, that would be this side right here, right? That's one of the two sides that makes up that right angle. And this is the other side that makes up that right angle. This side over here is not actually a part of the angle. Does that make sense? Like, I could take that side off and I still have a right angle. I can't take this side off and still have a right angle. Okay, the two sides that make up the right angle are called legs. The two sides that make up the right angle are called legs. They are the sides of the triangle that are adjacent to, meaning they make up that right angle. And then the other angle, or the other side I should say, is the side that we would say is opposite the right angle meaning if I drew an arrow coming straight out from that right angle, that's your opposite side. That is called the hypotenuse. Is that review for you? Okay. Yes. So the two legs and the hypotenuse is review for you. Um, which, le or which side of the triangle is the longest? Always the hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is not the longest, then guess what? It's not a hypotenuse or you don't have a right triangle. One of the two. Okay? Pythagorean theorem. Raise your hand if you've used the Pythagorean theorem before. So pretty much every single one of you. Awesome. So this should be easy. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So, when I'm talking about A squared and B squared and C squared, which two letters out of A, B, and C, which two are talking about legs? A and B are the lengths of the legs of the right triangle, and C is the length of the... Okay. Some people memorize the formula as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. It's the same idea. Um, as long as A and B are the two legs and not the hypotenuse, it doesn't matter which one you call A and which one you call B. Okay. What are things we use the Pythagorean theorem to do? We use it to find the length of a segment on a coordinate plane. If we don't want to use the dis the uh, oh my brain's going the distance formula, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We can use it to find the length of a missing side of a right triangle if I know the other two side lengths, and we can use it to determine if I have a right triangle um, if I'm given all three side lengths. Because if I can set it up so that a squared plus b squared equals c squared and that works out given those numbers, then it is a right triangle. I can identify what the right angle would be then. Always write out the formula. The Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You will see me always putting parentheses around whatever it is that I'm putting in there. Okay, that's important. All right, so here's my first two types of problems. Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the segment on the coordinate plane. If the answer is a radical, write the answer as a radical and then round to the nearest tenth. So it looks like they want both answers, right? Now, on last night's homework, you just used the distance formula, didn't you? Okay, so let's see what we've got going on. Using the Pythagorean theorem, I have two options. I can make a right triangle either by going down and over, or I could go over and down. Either way, it doesn't matter. But you're gonna make a right triangle. Let me see if I can highlight it a little bit. So come down and then over. How do I know that's a right triangle? Because that right angle is right here. The grid lines even make that little box for me, don't they? 
And why do I like those? Well, because this line or this side, I can count, is three units long, right? And how long is this side? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven units long? Are those legs, hypotenuse, what are they? Legs. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem, something squared plus something squared is equal to C squared. I don't know the hypotenuse, but I know that 3 squared plus 7 squared is going to equal C squared. Right? So what is 3 squared? 9. What is 7 squared? What is 9 plus 49? 58. So how would I find C? You have to square root both sides. So a square root cancels out a squared. And C is equal to rad 58. Now let me think, 58, is, there, is it divisible by 4 or 9? It's not, is it? That means that rad 58 is as simple as that radical can get. It does, however, say to round to the nearest tenth, so my other answer would be what? Rad 58, 7.61 means that 6 is going to what? Stay a 6, so I would say 7.6 is what the answer is rounded to the nearest tenth. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yes, you could. And what this is actually, if I look back here, way back up here, I could get C by itself right now, couldn't I? Just look at C. If I wanted to get C by itself, I would square root it, right? Which means I would square root that. Doesn't that kind of look like the, dis the distance formula? Yeah. The distance formula is made from the Pythagorean theorem. So by using the Pythagorean theorem, you are actually using the distance formula just in a different way. Does that kind of make sense a little bit? Okay. And for some reason, this way seems to make it a lot more easy than the distance formula. Yes? A and B, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that your hypotenuse is C. Okay. But A and B, it doesn't matter which is which. Okay, so let's look at this guy. Now, I tend to always go towards the x-axis or down to make my triangles, but again, you don't have to. It doesn't matter. But if I make my right triangle like that, what are the lengths of those sides? Well, the shorter side is 3, and the longer side is 8. Very similar to the previous one, isn't it? Just a little different. So, something squared plus something squared equals C squared. You're going to put your 3 and your 8, and it doesn't matter which is which, because you're adding them. So, 9 plus 64 equals C squared. What is 9 plus 64? 73 is equal to C squared. So, how do I solve for C? Square root. Can I simplify square root of 73? No, because it's not divisible by 9 or 4 like we talked about yesterday. So there's my exact answer. And my approximate answer then, square root of 73, 8.54. What is that round to in tenths? 8.5. Right, because that 4 means that 5 stays a 5. Okay, so, so there. All right, so now let's get down to ones that don't have a graph. I have a triangle, there's no graph, there's no coordinates or anything, but I notice that triangle has two of the sides given to me. What sides have they given me? Have they given me two legs or have they given me a leg and a hypotenuse? Leg and a hypotenuse, because if I look directly across from that right angle, that's my hypotenuse which means what about 13? That has to be C. These ones, doesn't matter which one's A, which one's B, 
but this one has to be C. So, something squared plus something squared is equal to 13 squared. What are my other somethings, my A and B? One of them is X and one of them is 6. So let's square these. X squared is obviously X squared. What's 6 squared? Mm -hmm. And 13 squared? 169. How do I solve this equation? Subtract 36, right? I have to get those together before I can worry about taking a square root of something. So, 169 minus 36 is 133. By the way, it does say if the answer is a radical, write as a radical and round. So, if I'm square rooting both of those, x equals rad 133. I can't draw a tree for that. And as an approximate... 11.5 so this side right here you could call it radical 133 or you could call it 11.5 to check it you could plug it in I would use this the exact value not the approximate value okay alright number 6 why is number 6 a little different There's radicals already in it, right? Shouldn't be a big deal that they flipped it upside down because I should still be able to take my right angle and see that that's going to be my hypotenuse, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that has to be C. So when I do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, rad 11 has to be in the C place. What are my A and my B? One is rad 6 and the other one is X. What happens when I square a radical? Think about this. Rad 6 squared means rad 6 times rad 6, right? When you're squaring something, that's what it means. What is rad 6 times rad 6? Rad 36. What is the square root of 36? Can I take a shortcut to get there? Yeah, the squared cancels out the square root because it's going to end up doing this kind of thing and you get a nice number. So I have 6 plus what? X squared equals what's radical 11 squared going to end up as? 11. If we recognize that shortcut, it helps us. So what do I do now? Subtract 6 x squared equals 5 square root and x equals radical 5. I can't simplify that at all. What's the approximate value? 2.23 which is 2.2. So-so? Okay. I didn't give myself much room but let's look at number 7. 7 and 8 don't have a picture. So this is three different types of problems. We have a graph, we have a diagram, and now we just have a description. Apparently they don't want to talk to me. So if I do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, obviously A is rad 26. That goes in one of them. C is 12, that has to go in the C location. And then the other one's the one I don't know. I can call it X, I can call it B, if I want to think A squared plus B squared. It doesn't really matter what I call it, it's just the one I'm looking for. So I'm just going to call it X. The reason why I choose X over B is simply because my B's sometimes look like 6's and then that gets confusing. So, what's radical 26 squared going to be? 26 plus x squared equals, what's 12 squared? 144. 
What do I do now? Subtract 26. So x squared equals, what's 144 minus 26? 118. Square root both sides. Can I divide 118 by 9? Nope. Can I divide it by 4? Nope. So it looks like x equals rad 118 is as far as I can go. I do, however, need to do that one. 10.86, what that? what is that going to round off to? Thank you. What's it going to round off to? 10.9, because that 6 is going to bump that 8 up. So 10.9. Kind of sort of getting it. You try the last one there. Is this what you got? So divide by 9? No. Divide by 4? Nope. So, rad 206 is my answer there. And the approximate answer... 14.35 is 14 point what? Yep. So, so? Okay. Um, let's see. Yes, and I do want to cover a little bit of it. I think we kind of get the idea of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But... 9, 10, 11, and 12 are asking a different question. It's saying state if it is a right triangle or state if they can form a right triangle. In other words, I need to see is a squared plus b squared indeed equal to c squared. So in this triangle, do you see how there's no right angle? Where are they thinking the right angle would be? Top, left, or right? Top. So if this is the right angle, we would be assuming that this is C. So the way we say if this is a right triangle or not is we do 10 squared plus 12 squared. Does that equal 15 squared? If it does, then we have a right triangle. If it doesn't, then we don't have a right triangle. 10 squared is 100. 12 squared is and 15 squared, 15 squared, 225, is 100 plus 144, 225, isn't this 244? That does not equal 225. So, even though that looks like it could be a right angle, it's not. So, is it a right triangle? No. Okay. What if, I'm going to jump down to number 11. Could these be a right triangle? Well, if I have three measurements, I need to figure out which one would be the hypotenuse. What do we know about the hypotenuse? It's the longest side. So I know it's not six. It's either one of those two. 193. 196. 193 is 13.89, so 15 is the longest one, right? So that means that's my C value. So does 6 squared plus radical 193 squared equal 15 squared? So first thing you have to do is identify which one's C, and then we check from there. 6 squared is? What's, one, what's radical 193 squared? 193. And 15 squared, we just did that on the previous problem. 225. Is 193 plus 36, 225? 
So close. 229 does not equal 225, does it? So could those be the lengths of the sides of a right triangle? No. You try 10 and 12. See if 10 and 12 are right triangles or not. And then I'll do one or two of the word problems with. All right, are either of these right angles or right triangles? 8 squared plus rad 17 squared equals 9 squared, right? I'm assuming this would be the right angle. That's the one we're checking. 64 plus 17, does that equal 81? 81 equals 81. So, yes, we have a right triangle. Um, I think rad 113 is the longest, line, longest side here, right? So, does 8 squared plus 7 squared equal... Rad 113 squared, 64 plus 49, does that equal 113? 113 does equal 113, so yes, those sides could be the lengths of a right triangle. Get the idea? Okay. Now let's look at these. Now I'm going to set these up, but I'm not going to solve them for you because the solving I think we've kind of done. We know how to solve it right so let's just set these up the bottom of a ladder must be placed three feet from a wall so here's my wall there's a ladder that leans up against the wall and the bottom of it has to be three feet from the wall do you see how i got that picture here's my wall and the ladder leans up and it has to be three feet away where's my right angle top left or right right here right because a wall is going to make a right angle with the floor okay the ladder is 12 feet long well if this is three which one of these is 12 this one because this is the ladder this is how this is the 12 feet there could I find this one by using my Pythagorean theorem right once you set up the picture it's easy to solve from there it's just using the other stuff Okay. The area of a square is 81 square centimeters. So let's think about a square for a minute. What do we know about a square? All the sides are equal. If the area is 81 square centimeters, what do I know about the length of a side here? Wouldn't it be 9 and 9? Because 9 times 9 gives me 81. Which means that all of these sides are 9. What does it ask me? Find the length of a side. Well, okay. So the answer there is 9 centimeters. Find the length of the diagonal. And it doesn't matter which diagonal because in a square, both diagonals are the same. Now, think about this for a minute. I know that if this is a square, I have a right angle here, here, technically here, and here. Right? Watch this. You ready for my magic trick? What do I have right there? A right triangle. Guess what? Can you find C? 9 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. Make sense? Do you like my magic trick? All right. TVs are sold based on the size of the screen's diagonal. Did you know that? A 42-inch TV is not 42 inches tall or 42 inches wide. It's 42 inches diagonally. So, what screen size, here's the TV screen, if the height is 24 and the width is 32, the diagonal is what you're looking for. Well, that's the exact same thing. You have a right angle, you're looking for the C value. Yeah? All right, last one. Ruby stands five feet tall. Here's Ruby. She is five feet tall. Okay. I know, she's very thin. Her shadow, where would her shadow be? It would be coming out from her feet, right? Not her head, her feet. So her shadow would be here. How long is her shadow? Six feet. 
that's a right angle because usually people stand perpendicular to the ground, right? How far is it from the top of her head to the end of her shadow? So again, I'm looking for that hypotenuse. So once you set them up, you should be able to solve them from there. So, so? All right, your homework has posted on Google Classroom. Happy studying.